In this video, we're going to go over how to stay strong after 55. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Dr. Rowe coming to you from Spine Care in St. Joseph, Michigan. In this video, we're going to go over exercises that are going to help keep us strong and fit after 55. Each one of these exercises target a different area in the body, so make sure to go through them all. They're perfect to do two to three times a week to build and maintain strength, but also to engage those muscles, keep us moving and flexible, so hopefully everyday activities will become a little bit easier and less painful. So with that being said, Let's get started. If there's one exercise that I could recommend doing daily to help keep the core and the lower back strong, it's definitely the bird dog. To get into position, we're going to start on all fours like this. Depending on the firmness of your mattress, you might be able to do this one in bed, but it probably will be easier to do on a floor. Let's start with the easier half bird dog. What you're going to do is slowly slide one foot away from you, keeping the top of your foot flat on the bed or the floor. Point your toes away and slide your foot away from you as much as you can. As you do this, you're going to feel a deep stretch form in your calf that works upward towards the back of your thigh, the hamstrings, into the glutes around the hips, and then the lower back. Once you feel it in the lower back, you're going to hold this and then slowly lift your leg up so it's in line with your body. In this position, you're going to feel a ton of muscles start to fire. The core, the lower back, the glutes around the hips, all down the legs. It's a wonderful exercise. Hold this comfortably for three to five seconds. You're going to relax, and then you're going to repeat this on the other side. Do this 10 to 15 times on both sides. But if it feels like you have a little bit more energy, you can always throw in another set or two. So to take this one to the next level and engage some more muscles, including the glutes, this is what you can do. Let's get back into our original position like this, but this time around we're going to do a kick out. So imagine an arc off to your side. You're just going to slowly take your leg outward like this. The more that you take it out, the more that you're going to feel the muscles around the hip and also the core start to fire. So give that one a try. Just make sure whatever you do on one side to do on the other to keep everything in balance. So let's now build into the full bird dog. It's very similar to that first position. The only difference is we're now going to lift up the other side's arm with the other side's leg. So my left arm and right leg. If you have a lot of difficulty with balancing, a lot of weakness, you're probably going to notice that your body's going to wobble while doing this exercise. So this is going to help build better balance, more coordination, and better posture. That's why I really like this exercise. So give this one a try when you are ready. Since we're already in this position, let's throw in a bonus exercise that's going to help just improve flexibility keep us loose throughout the day. It's called the frog rocker. So we're going to start on all fours, take our feet, put them together, and then slide our knees outward as much as we can. Really focus on feeling a deep stretch form in the inner part of the thigh, towards the groin, to the outer part of the hips. Once you feel that, you're going to take your hands and crawl forward as much as you can until you feel a really good stretch form in the upper back. My hands are roughly shoulder width apart, and I would recommend either gripping into the edge of the bed or right into the floor. Treat them like an acre point so they won't slip. Once you feel that good stretch, you're going to tuck your chin towards your chest and now rock your whole body backward, taking your butt down towards your heels. You're going to feel a deep, wonderful stretch pretty much throughout the whole body, into the back, into the glutes, into the hips. To intensify this for the upper back, just take your chest and allow it to sag a little bit more towards the floor. Try to hold this one comfortably for 20 to 30 seconds and do nice, slow, controlled breathing. Just let out as much tension as you can. When you need to relax, just rock forward like this. But give this one a try for about three to five repetitions. So here's how to help strengthen your arms and shoulders. For this one, we need a simple weight for resistance. Depending on your strength level, you can start off with soup cans, water bottles, and as you get stronger, I would recommend building into using dumbbells. These are my personal set of dumbbells. They're called power blocks. I really like them because they're adjustable. You can go anywhere from five pounds all the way to 100. The sky's the limit. If you would like to pick some of these up, I'll leave a link in this video's comments section and description. I love these things. So let's start off by strengthening our arms. You're just gonna kind of scoot a little bit 
towards the end of a chair, have very good upright posture, have your back as straight as possible. Let's bend our elbows and we're going to tuck them towards our side. So we're going to keep our elbows right towards our side. Let's let the weights drop down towards the floor. Get a really good footing with this one too. I like to drive my heels into the floor. It helps engage the glutes and stabilize the lower back. We're then going to slowly curl upward like this as much as we can, just bringing the weights upward towards our chest and shoulders. You're going to get a really good activation into the bicep muscles. You're going to hold this for a brief second and now what you're going to do is slowly lower the weight down. So don't go down quick with it. Fight the weight, slowly bring them down. You're going to notice it hits the muscles just a little bit differently. So go up nice and slowly and also down nice and slowly. Try to do this one for about 10 times and then relax. Afterwards, see how you feel. If it was pretty light, increase the weight for more resistance and you can always throw in another set or two. So now let's take this one to the next level and target the shoulders. We're going to do a very similar motion. We're going to come up like this, but I have my palms facing towards me. What I'm going to do now is rotate them away like this so my palms are facing away. I'm going to bring my elbows back a little bit so it's kind of like pinching my shoulder blades and then I'm going to press those weights upward like this, moving through my shoulders. So we're going to get a nice shoulder press with it. Reach up as far as you can, engage the back and the shoulder muscles, hold this for a brief second and then slowly bring it down. Rotate like this and let's get back into our starting position. Again, give this one a try nice and slowly for about 10 repetitions more if you are able to. For the shoulders too, you can also do what is called a side raise. So for this one, you can do this both at the same time, but it's probably easier at the beginning to start with one weight. You're going to bend your elbow roughly at 90 degrees. And what you're going to do is focus on driving this elbow straight up towards the ceiling. So just nice and slow like this, raise it up. You're going to feel all the muscles on the side of the shoulder start to engage, including the deltoids. Hold this for a brief second, lower it slowly. Try to give that one a try for 10 to 15 times. Just remember, whatever you do on one side, always do on the other to keep everything in balance. So what I'd like to do last is a really good compound movement called the dip. The dip is going to pretty much focus on the upper body, all the muscles, chest, back, and the arms, especially the triceps here. So what I'm going to do, again, is drive my heels into the floor to engage the glutes for support to protect the back, and I'm going to grab off to the side. This one, you're going to want a chair with armrests, preferably one that can support your body weight. And you're just going to keep your back straight and now lift your body up using your arms. As you do this, you're going to feel a lot of muscles engage, again, across the upper back into the uh, chest right here, but mostly you're going to feel it in the back of the arms. Hold this one for a second or two and now slowly lower your body weight down. So again, we're not trying to go down quickly. Just slowly lower your body weight down like this, take a breather, and then repeat this one nice and slowly for 10 to 15 repetitions. Again, if it feels like you have a little bit more energy, try to throw some more repetitions in. With this exercise, we're going to target the upper body. Let's start by doing what is called the shoulder blade lift off, which is going to strengthen the muscles around the shoulder blades and the upper back. We just need a wall or a door. Start off with your whole backside flush against it, put your feet together and put them slightly out in front of you. So that way you can lean your body weight into the door. A note about this exercise, the more that you have your feet out in front of you, the harder it will be. So once we're in position, we're going to bend our elbows roughly at 90 degrees, tuck them in towards our side. Gently press your elbows into the door. What we're going to focus on doing now is using our shoulder blades and trying to pinch them as much as we can while driving our elbows into the door at the same time. As you do this, you're going to notice that your body lifts forward, your chest comes forward like this, and you're going to feel a really good activation of the muscles around the shoulder blades and the upper back. Hold this comfortably for three to five seconds. You're going to relax, and then you're going to repeat this 10 to 15 times, and with each repetition, try to build into it a little bit more. Press forward as much as you can. Afterwards, see how you feel. If it feels like you have a little bit more energy, try to throw in another set or two, and to make it more challenging, just pull your feet slightly a little bit more in front of you. So next, let's focus a little bit more towards the front, including the chest with the classic push-up. I know a lot of people struggle with the push-up, so here's a really easy way to progress into it. Let's start standing right next to that wall or the door. You're going to put your feet together slightly 
pretty close to the door anyway. Again, with this one, the further that you have your feet away, the harder it will be, so I get pretty close. You're going to take your hands, you're going to put them right on the door. Have them roughly about shoulder level and also shoulder width. Now, keeping your back straight, you're going to slowly lower your weight towards the floor. Really resist against it. This will give you a nice arm workout. So when you're pretty close to the door, like your nose is about to touch, what you're going to do at that point is use your arm strength to drive away very quickly. So what we're going to do is slowly come towards the door, but press away really quickly like this. I would like to do this one for at least 40 to 50 repetitions. I know that sounds like a lot, but what we're trying to do is build strength also building endurance. Once this becomes pretty easy, challenge yourself by just pushing your feet a little bit further away from the door and give that a try. But what you're going to find is that this becomes pretty easy to do standing. So at that point, what I would focus on doing is building into the classic push-up. So the best lower body strengthening exercise, in my opinion, is the squat. The squat is going to help strengthen the hips, the legs, and the knees, but it also can make everyday activities become a little bit easier to do, including going up and down stairs, walking, and getting out of a chair. So here's a really easy way to do the squat. What we're going to do is grab that chair that we just used. Hopefully it doesn't have wheels. If it does, grab a chair without wheels, and you're going to stand right in front of it just like this. Just take your hands, put them on top for support. You want your feet roughly hip width apart and just point your toes out slightly like this. It helps take tension off of the knees. You're going to put all of your body weight onto your heels during this exercise. From here, I'm going to squeeze my glutes to engage them and then also brace my core muscles. It's kind of like if somebody was to poke you in your stomach, how you tense up. What you want to do is hold that. It will help protect the spine. From here, we're going to keep our back nice and straight, and we're just going to bend our knees and then squat our bottom down and slightly away from the chair. The more that you go down, the more that you're going to feel the legs right here and the glutes start to engage. Challenge yourself to go down as far as you can. Hold this one for a second or two, and then drive your weight upward like this, and then take a breather. So slowly go down. Once you can't go down any further, you're going to hold that and then quickly drive up using your leg strength. I would recommend doing this one for about 10 to 15 repetitions. And with each repetition, challenge yourself to go down just a little bit more. Afterwards, see how you feel. If it feels like you have a little bit more energy, you can always throw in another set or two. To take this one to the next level and make it more challenging, don't use the chair. So what you can do is put your hands on your hips or across your chest like this and then do it. So give that one a try when you feel ready. But if you really want to take the squat to the next level, start using weights. You can do what is called a goblet squat. So let's take our dumbbell or whatever weight you were using earlier and just grab it like this and put it right towards your chest. Just gently press it towards your chest and tuck your elbows towards your side. This time around, you're going to take a little bit wider of a stance. So your feet should be a little bit wider than hip width. Your feet are going to get pointed out slightly. Again, we're going to keep our back nice and straight. We're going to brace the core muscles, squeeze our glutes, and then squat down just like this. Go down as far as you can. The weight right here is going to make it a lot harder, so challenge yourself to build into as much weight as possible. Give this one a try for 10 to 15 repetitions, and if it feels like you have more energy, try to throw in another set or two. If the exercises help, please support the channel by giving this video a like and maybe subscribing too. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.